My topic this week was one of the seven virtues that we talked about uh, during the self-control message. And the topic this week is knowledge. We all have an element of knowledge. Knowledge is a gift from God. We can accept it or reject it. Knowledge, as defined in certain dictionaries, says it's the fact or condition of knowing something with familiarity gained through either experience or association. So as we walk our life every day, as we're in that walk, we're gaining new knowledge. We are learning something new every day. Knowledge is an acquaintance with understanding of a technique, of a science, of an art. It's the fact or condition of being aware of something. Knowledge has gives us an awareness. It's the range of one's information or understanding. You've ever heard anybody say, to the best of my knowledge, when they're responding to something. They may have limited knowledge on a topic and they'll respond, to the best of my knowledge, I think, boom, boom. It's the fact or condition of having information and learning from that information. Now, knowledge was introduced way back in the beginning when God created man. God gave man basic knowledge. If we have our Bibles and you want to turn all the way back to Genesis, back in the beginning, chapter 2 and verse 9. It reads, And out of the ground the Lord made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I think people forget about the fact that there were two trees. Forget about that fact. But... The one key tree, the, 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 the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Mm. The tree of knowledge of good and evil was so called that because it was really a test of obedience mm. by which our first parents were challenged as to whether they would be good or bad. Obey God or break His command. Because back then there was just one command. Don't eat of this tree. Wow. You can do anything else you want. So they had the knowledge, don't eat. They were told not to do that. So that tree was put out there as a temptation to see whether or not we could be fully obedient to God. And we know that we can't. We know that Adam and Eve, through their sinful nature, carries down into us today. Then we go on in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 17, and it reads, But the tree of knowledge of good and evil... You shall not eat, for in that day you eat of it, you shall surely die. The element of doubt raised in here. Okay, they were told, they were given the knowledge that they would die if they ate of it. And they thought of the death as perhaps a physical death, that their life would just be terminated. They didn't realize it was a spiritual death that was going to occur. So, God prepared mankind when he designed Adam and Eve with a specific capacity for, I'll call it, moral responsibility. They were responsible to God for all of their actions. They were responsible to obey him. He set them in the Garden of Eden to be obedient and warned them there was life or death. He warned them. And depending on whether they obeyed his only one command at that time, death was to be the punishment for disobedience. Now, today, we have punishment for disobedience. We have knowledge of certain things in our lives. And we choose to be disobedient or not. The consequence may not be a death. The consequence may be a struggle or Something that's like, oh, now I have to deal with this or I have to deal with that. When I was growing up, my brother and I had the knowledge of stealing. We knew if we stole something, 
we could possibly get sent to detention hall. I mean, uh, the uh, the red brick building over it's there. St. Gabriel's. St. Gabriel's. Okay. Oh. All right. We were threatened with that because we would go grocery shopping every week with my mother and father. And every week, my brother would steal something from the grocery store. Basically, he was shoplifting. I'm just going to take this. A ruler, a pencil, something that he wanted for school. And I knew about it, and I didn't say anything. So I was just as guilty as he was. I was an accomplice. Until one week, my father caught him. And boy, did he have a consequence to pay for that. But he didn't learn his lesson. Mm. Guess what he did? He did it again. And he did it again. So my father couldn't trust him. He didn't go to the grocery store anymore. He didn't learn his lesson. He had a punishment that was, was levied. And it was good for a little period of time. Didn't learn. As we grew up, I had a knowledge of God that was different than my brother's knowledge of God. I believed that based on what I knew, there was always going to be a consequence. He believed that, and I forget about that, because when he got older and got hooked on drugs, he stole again. He would break into houses. Mm. He didn't learn. But his consequence ultimately was death, the physical death. As a result of his lifestyle, he died. How old was he? He was 29 years old. He chose that. He knew that he was faced with that consequence. He knew that there was always going to be something. If you're doing these things that are wrong, he had the knowledge of right and wrong. We have the knowledge of right and wrong. There are many things today that people do and they have the knowledge of it. I'm going to throw another one out there because I hear about it all the time. A DUI. Mm. I have family, friends, co-workers, all had one. Okay, we had one, we had a fine to pay, we had things to do, and they didn't learn a lesson. Then they had two. I know of people that have had as many as six or seven. Yeah. When do they learn the lesson? Are they like my brother and they're like, you know what, okay, I'm going to be good for a little bit here, but I'm going to continue to do that. They have the knowledge in their head that they are making the wrong choice. But what happens is Satan, just like Satan challenged Adam and Eve, and said, do you believe that you're really going to die? So eat from this trick. Satan will continue to challenge us, and he will continue to test us. We're always under a test. And is he going to allow, are we going to be strong enough to resist him, or are we going to just give in to it? I always say that we should learn by our mistakes. I've made many mistakes myself in my life. Some of them I learned by, some of them I didn't. But if we try and turn it over, you've heard me talk about this, turn it over to God. Mm -hmm. Put it in His hands. We will, in fact, have His guidance to help us through these difficult times because we're all faced with these difficult times. And I brought these two issues up because I have family members that I know of that have been caught shoplifting, mm. that have DUIs. And it's like this, these two are two things that just people think they can just do and get away with mm. amongst mm. other things that are out there. Now, it kind of follows on to the sermon I talked about a couple weeks ago on self-control. And in self-control, there were seven virtues that were defined. And I'm going to reread 2 Peter chapter 1 and verses 2 through 8 to re-remind us of these virtues. And this might be a very good passage in your Bible that you may want to mark off and say, gee, what should I be reading today? Could be one that you might want to open up frequently and have it be a reminder. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verses 2 through 8. It says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God of Jesus our Lord. We have the knowledge of God, and grace and peace will be multiplied to us. We have the knowledge of God, of what He wants us to do, of the relationship that He wants us to have with Him. So, it says, 
seeing that His divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of Him who called us by His glory and excellence. The true knowledge of God. We're going to get that true knowledge of God by staying in the Word, by staying in the Bible. He's going to be with us. For by these He has granted us His precious and magnificent promises. We know that He has given us promises, the promise of eternal life. So that by them you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world by lust. Now lust doesn't mean this physical, lust just succumbing to sin. To escape that, having the, having the Holy Spirit be with us, having us giving us that defense to fight off the temptation from the evil one. So, here are the seven virtues. Now, for this very nature, also applying diligence in your faith, supply moral excellence, and in your moral excellence, knowledge, and in your knowledge, self-control, and in your self-control, perseverance, and in your perseverance, godliness, and in your godliness, brotherly kindness, and in your brotherly kindness, love. It all falls back to love. Here's what happens. We have to love God above everything else, and we have to love ourselves, and we have to love others. So if we don't love God, how can we love ourselves? If we're not loving ourselves, we're succumbing to Satan. He's pulling us to join his ranks. So, if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have these seven virtues. Knowledge is not only a gift, but it's a virtue from God. We can use it or abuse it. Now for most of my life, I did not think about blessings from God. Because this is a blessing, having that knowledge. I did not think about a relationship with Jesus. I thought I could do everything on my own, and when I tried to do everything on my own, it led me to worry about everything. 